this is Russ. <laughs> I'm back out on the road again. What am I riding? This is the Hemiway Rambler Premium. <laughs> yeah, the Premium. So I'm still learning this bike. You know, this is a mid-drive bike. You know, I was surprised that a lot of uh, a lot of people were saying that they didn't realize that you have to shift on a mid-drive bike. Yeah, you need to shift. <laughs> You need to shift. Yeah, this is a uh, torque sensor bike too. So essentially the uh, harder you push, uh, the more the uh, motor is gonna react as well. And this has nine speeds on this bike. Look at this car, why is he going? <laughs> that was interesting. He was over on this side of the road. I don't know why he did that. So you got nine speeds on this bike and um, it is a torque sensor. It does have a throttle. Uh, people have asked me, can you, can you throttle and not shift? Well, technically I guess you could. The thing is with the mid-drive bikes, it does, uh, uh, a lot of cop cars coming down here. Wonder what's going on. <laughs> Quite a few cop cars coming down there. So anyway, uh, I was looking around, sorry. God. Um, we're gonna do another hill test on this uh, bike. Because uh, as people were watching me do that first initial hill test, I kind of wondered too, because we were only getting like six something miles per hour going over it, and they said you were doing it wrong on a mid-drive bike. Okay. All right, the radar detector shows 16, 17 miles an hour. This thing's showing 17.3. Um, the Bafang motor and the uh, display screen is pretty accurate because it was showing 17 when that thing was showing 17. So it seems to be pretty accurate. I, I use that as a gauge to see how well these things are calibrated. I kind of tend to trust the uh, Tend to trust that the radar detector that's mounted up there. Sometimes the um, the display screens are off by a mile, mile and a half, two miles even. So anyway, they said that I was doing it wrong and thinking more about it. I think they're correct, but Russ is never wrong. I told you guys that we were just mistaken. <laughs> so we're gonna redo it. Um, so here's what they told me I should do, and I'm going to give it a try. As I was going up on that hill test, I was um, on the highest gear, thinking that well, you should be on a high gear going up the hill, which really doesn't make any sense. Yeah, really, because if you were pedaling going up the hill, what would you do your gears at? It would be at the lowest gears. <laughs> so you're putting an additional, um, additional effort given to the motor to try to spin that thing while it's sitting at the highest gear. No, put it on the lowest gear. Well, it may not necessarily have to be the lowest, but we'll, we'll keep it down there. We'll try it a couple times. Put it on the lower gears and then throttle it up. Okay, we'll see if that's any better. All right, now I typically would take, a, take that sidewalk, but we have a baby carriage there, so we're just gonna go on the uh, street here, and we're just gonna have to cut right back in again, so. So I really didn't want to do that. I'd rather have taken the sidewalk, but yeah, baby, you know. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna turn here, take a left. I did add a few extras to this. Is a a uh, handlebar mounted uh, flashing light. You see, not the most powerful one, but it's something's better than nothing. I got this from uh, the Hemi Zone, yeah, on Amazon. That's from Hemi Way. I also have a blinking light that's mounted on the uh, seat post. And that's from Hemiway as well. Thank you, Hemiway. That was given to me a while ago. I had that uh, sitting on my zebra, which I haven't taken out in a while, but I will do that. I still have the zebra. <laughs> Certain bikes I hang on to, and that's one of them I hang on to. So there was a time when I was thinking, maybe I'll get rid of this bike. But the more I thought about it, I go, no, nah, it's built so well. <laughs> it's 
built so well and it rides really nice, why would I get rid of this thing? So I kept it. Admittedly, it does not do 28 miles an hour. And that was one of the reasons why I kept thinking, yeah, well, do I want to keep this thing or do I want to sell it off? But, you know, I don't always do 28 miles an hour. In fact, very rarely do I hit 28. I usually only do that when I'm out on the streets and I'm trying to compete with the cars and everything. Then I'll go ahead and speed that thing up. But, you know, I don't, I don't go that, that all the time. So I figured, hey, yeah, let's keep it because it's a, it's a good bike. It's built well. You know, I keep thinking about which bikes to keep, which bikes I need to sell off. Because we are running out of space, that's for sure. So, season's running out too. If you're going to sell off a bike, you should sell it off now before you can't get rid of it, right? <laughs> then you're stuck with it all winter long, and then, and then uh, you might have to uh, deal with it next year. So, all right, here's another thing too with this mid-drive. All right, since we're on our way to the hill test, we got time to talk. Uh, People have told me too, when you shift, because you don't want to hear that clunking in the back, is uh, just stop, stop pedaling, make your shift, it'll move automatically to the next gear. Let's try that. Yeah, I heard it just click over. <laughs> and the reason is because, you know, the, uh, the chain continues to move even after you uh, stop pedaling. And the reason for it, uh, it kind of shifted by itself there, and the reason for it is because um, there's still the momentum of that thing moving because really the the motor is actually in the front <laughs> it's shifting by itself automatically here uh, the motors in the front uh, by your by your pedals right there's no motor on the, on the uh, the wheel so to get that thing over yeah, that thing's shifting all over the place by itself I don't know why it does that by itself but it did it seems like maybe it's shifting because it knows that I'm push, pushing a little harder on the pedals so anyway, all right, so then as you slow down, you should probably uh, gear down a little bit too, okay? Um, yeah, the thing keeps moving because it's pushing, um, pushing you through the motor, essentially, and that motor is connected to your rear tire or rear wheel by the chain. So the chain is going to keep moving, and that momentum will help shift it to the next uh, next gear so yeah this is not a bike that I plan to go really fast on uh, first off torque sensors make it a little bit harder for me as you know because I don't have a very strong uh, sorry things are blown into my eyes here kind of adjusting there um, I don't have a very strong leg or left knee and so I'm kind of uh, kind of limited in how much I can go in speed if I have to keep pedaling harder to go faster so so yeah, this is kind of more of a easier cruising type bike for me. It's not going to be one that uh, I'm going to go speeding down the road with. You could, but not for me. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. Now because I am pedaling, you can hear that I'm more winded already. Um, and that's just from because I don't have the kind of exercise that some other folks do. And uh, the weakened leg kind of makes it uh, tougher for me as well. So a lot of times when I do these videos, I'm going to throw out a little bit here. Let's hit them with the bell here. Um, I usually throttle when I'm doing my videos because then I don't sound so, so out of breath. But this bike is going to make me out of breath because I am pedaling as I'm doing the videos. So yeah, forgive me for that, but that's, that's just the way I am, okay? drop that gear a little bit so yeah I think there's a learning curve for sure for mid-drive bikes because um, you, you cannot simply hop on one of these things not knowing what's gonna go on that uh, you you got to learn how to how to shift so because of that someone said well I wouldn't consider this uh, Rambler bike no that'd be a mistake they, they have other versions of this bike okay if you like the design of the bike, but you just don't like the mid-drive, I would suggest you get the premium model. No, not the premium model, sorry, the advanced model, which is the one that has um, hydraulic brakes, but a conventional torque sensor, or sorry, a conventional, uh, <laughs> a 
conventional uh, hub motor. <laughs> it does not have a torque sensor. Okay? It has a cadence sensor as well, which means it's pretty much uh, like the other bikes you're probably used to, that it will automatically uh, deal with speeds and stuff like that. If you didn't want to, you can just throttle the whole thing if you wanted to do that and not worry about anything. But yeah, I'm throttling now. I mean, after a while I get a little bit tired from pedaling. It's just, I'm, I'm just not in the best shape, right? And then uh, I don't have the strongest legs. <laughs> so, um, so having that, that throttle is really helpful for me. When I need it, I know it's there. So the other bikes that are torque sensors that don't have the throttle, it's, it's tough for me. I can't, I can't really ride them very well. And um, I have nothing to back myself up on in the sense that if, uh, if I'm too tired, I said, yeah, I can't, I can't go any further. I'm kind of stuck at that point. So. So today, uh, it's about 70 degrees out right now. It's a perfect, ideal riding temperature for me. I love 70 degree weather for bike riding. It's cool enough that I'm not sweating at all. It's got a nice breeze when I, when I uh, ride. So uh, I still have you know, my long sleeves on and stuff. I, I'm, I'm in shorts again right now. So we're almost near the, uh, the hill test. We'll, we'll pit a little bit. But now, the way we're gonna do this hill test too is um, we're gonna throttle only. We're not gonna pedal it. Now, if we pedaled it, we'd probably be even better. <laughs> but to keep it, uh, keep it consistent with all the other bikes that we've done this test with, all of them were done with the throttle. So that's why I wanna test it with the throttle. And we'll see if it goes any better than the six something miles an hour that it did last time. That is a loud bird. <laughs> All right, I also put a uh, cell phone mount on here too. <laughs> I, guess, uh, I guess that is something I added since the last time. I, the thing is with, with the cell phone mounts, they come and they go. I take them off, I put on another bike and all that. Oh, I also put the uh, water bottle cage on the front basket. So I have a water bottle on here too. All right, so we're coming up to the hill test at this point. So we're gonna stop, I'm gonna, I'm gonna lower my gears. And somebody said, yeah, push that thing all the way up to pedal assist level five. Okay, we'll put it all the way to level five. We'll lower our gears. He says, bring it down, bring the gears down. Okay, we'll bring it down. Bring it down, push the throttle. <laughs> all right, we're, we're as far down as it goes. It's down the first gear. All right, so I'm gonna have to angle my head a little bit to read this thing. All right, so we're essentially stopped at this point. Throttle only, slowly throttle. Okay, slowly throttle up. That thing was trying to shift on me already. Uh-oh, somebody's on the path. I don't know if that's a good thing. Maybe not a good thing. Doing about 12 miles an hour. So it's not going as fast as we want. Should we throttle up one? Let's throttle up one. Maybe throttle down when we get up to uh, the hill. Maybe I should have done it that way. Throttle down a little bit. No, it's still gonna slow down. Uh oh, people on the other side too. All right, I'm just gonna look at the numbers here. No, it's still low. No, it's a little higher. 8.5. <laughs> it did do better. 8.5. All right, I'm gonna turn around though, because I want to measure that that thing. Let's go turn around. I'm just gonna hobble here, move myself around, around this way. Okay, we're gonna do this again. All right, I repositioned myself. We're gonna do this hill test again. giving myself some speed to go up here. Then as we go up this hill, I'm gonna start lowering my gears. We're about 15 miles an hour right now, so let's lower it. We 
We're as low as we can go. Yeah, that's as low as we can go. We are hitting a point one. Eight point one. <laughs> All right. So uh, the first time we did it, let's let's move this gears up a little bit here. Okay. So first time we did it, we were able to get um, eight point five. Second time we did it, we got it at eight point one. So. Yeah, it's a slight improvement compared to the uh, previous test. So there you have it. That's our new and improved uh, measurement for this particular bike. So we'll, we'll say 8.1, okay? Because that was the lowest uh, setting that we had for the two tests that we did. All right. So where else are we gonna go today? Well, I think I was just gonna turn back around, but since we're already here, let's go through here, go through the forest preserve and head back and talk a little bit as we're going. So overall, what do I think about the Rambler as, as a mid-drive bike? The mid-drive bike, people have asked me, is, is this now my new favorite uh, thing to do? I would not say that. Yeah, I would not say it's my favorite type of uh, thing because of my knee and my leg, okay? I think if I had the ability to pedal more and I was one that wanted to pedal more, then yeah, it would become more of a favorite because of that. But it's not. Uh, you have to go based on what you're able, able to do and what you're not able to do. And based on, um, based on my uh, inabilities to do certain things because of my physical conditioning, um, I still think at this point, a. Uh, Hub drive motor is actually better suited for me with a cadence sensor, <laughs> all right? Yeah. Um, but I do appreciate Hemiway giving me the opportunity to try a mid-drive bike and uh, getting to understand how it actually works. I think that's kind of critical that I kind of know how, how mid-drives work and to be able to ride a mid-drive bike. You know, one of, the, one of the reasons why, one of the reasons why I did not uh, do a, a uh, an excursion out in Alaska with with a e-bike is because I didn't have any idea what kind of bike they were going to give me. I didn't know if they would be mid-drive bikes, if they would be uh, hub drive bikes. I didn't know if they had uh, torque sensors or if they had cadence sensors. That's a big deal for a guy like me. I have to kind of know before agreeing to take a, an excursion like that. So I opted not to do it. Um, I think it would have been fun to ride around in Alaska on the bike, but without knowing certain things in advance, and there was no way that the crews knew it either because these are outside companies that offer these excursions and you know the people who answer the phones at, at the, uh, let me hit this button here first, at the cruise lines, they don't know. <laughs> All they know is uh, they're gonna give them an e-bike. That's all they're gonna. That's all they basically know. <laughs> so yeah, I didn't do it. So, uh, but I can give you some advice if you have issues like me, like if you have um, a weakened leg, a bad hip, a, a replaced knee, so, something like that. It makes it difficult for you to ride a bike like everybody else. Okay. Now, this is just my opinion, all right? You, you can agree or not, but in my opinion, if you're like me, your best bet would probably be hub drive motor with a cadence sensor. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what I'm gonna come out and say. After trying these bikes, trying this stuff out, I think that is your best bet. Now, who is this mid-drive type bike good for? Well, it's pretty much everybody else. <laughs> if they're... <laughs> If, you're, uh, if you have no problems with your legs, you have no problems with your knees, hips, anything like that, you pedal just fine, you might wanna try a mid-drive. Mid I pushed a button, I don't know whether it's gonna give us the light or not. That one, that button, every time I push it, doesn't give me a positive feel. I can't tell if it actually accepted my push or it didn't. Yeah, so, for everybody else, yeah, you, you might want to consider a mid-drive. There, there are people who, who want to pedal, all right? They want the bike to feel like a regular bike, a non-electric bike. Hey, here you go. 
this would be it. And if you pedaled and you went over those hills, um, you would do just fine. Okay. Now, could we have gone faster if we pedaled over that hill? Absolutely would have. <laughs> but it wouldn't be fair to the rest of the other bikes because we didn't pedal those when we took those measurements. So that's why I wanted to see how well would a mid-drive bike go over that hill. Um, throttled only, okay? All right, so we got better, we got a little bit better result. A couple miles per hour is faster. Uh, not the greatest, I would say, but I don't think this bike was designed to do it that way. This bike is designed for you to pedal it. It's got 120 Newton meters of torque, which makes it higher than any of the other bikes that I had. But that's, that's when you're pedaling it, all right? You have to kind of remember that, so. Okay. And, and the key is, too, when, you, when you're doing these um, shifts, okay, except for that last shift I did, uh, stop pedaling. Let the motor kind of move it down itself. All right, let me, I'm gonna gear, I'm gonna gear up a little bit here. If you stop pedaling a little bit, It'll move it. If you pedal hard while you're shifting, yeah, you could do some damage. You don't want to do that. Gear down, gear down. Yeah, that, the automatic movement of the chain anyway is going to help it shift to the next level. Let's take the shortcut here. I haven't done the shortcut in a while. Why not do it? <laughs> So, am I keeping this bike or getting rid of it? Yeah, I'm gonna hang on to it. <laughs> it's my only mid-drive bike, come on. It's my only mid-drive bike. I'm gonna, I'm gonna enjoy it as much as I can. Yeah. So, there are certain types of bikes that I still hang on to even though um, people are kind of surprised I will. And uh, this would be one of them. I, I probably don't do as well on this bike as other people would do, but I still want it. Yeah, I want to keep it. It's the technology. I want to. I want to learn it. it might take me a while <laughs> to learn it better. It's okay. All right, we're going up a little incline. Let's gear down a little bit. Yeah. So we go over the top. Let's shift back up again. There we go. Now, if this was my hub drive cadence sensor bikes, if it was the same model bike, I'd be flying over that <laughs> because I would be taking the, uh, the throttle and just throttling it hard and getting over the top. So every bike is a little different. It's for different purposes, right? All right, we're gonna gear down a little bit here because we're going up again. All right, we gotta pass this uh, street. This is always tough to, to pass through because uh, cars run you over if you're not careful. So one side has stopped, but if the other side doesn't stop, then it's kind of worthless, but he's, she's waiting for me, so that's good. All right, there's no one stopping too. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> I always wave thank you to everybody. Let them know I appreciate it. Really, that's the only way to get through there safely. You gotta hope that the drivers will, will acknowledge it's gonna be hard for the guy to cross. Let's help him out, right? Better yet, city should put something up there. I keep saying that. <laughs> they, need, they need a little light, you know, temporary light, just to, to get people over that. Oh, that's a big bend. <laughs> Yeah, well, she did pretty good. <laughs> she was like bent in half. I could never do that. <laughs> that would not happen to me, that's for sure. Even if I was in my prime, I would have never been able to do that. <laughs> All right. Shifting around, shifting and shifting, shifting and pedaling. <laughs> I 
I'm getting better. I, I know that for a fact. I am getting better doing this. But it takes, it takes a little bit of time. Yeah. I think any new, um, any new bike or any new product takes a little bit of time to get used to. Some bikes I can pretty much get used to pretty fast, yeah. Because it's very similar to any of the other bikes. But this one, no, not really. My shifting is still a little bit rough, but I'm getting a little bit better at, at it. Yeah, let's take the shortcut. <laughs> We'll go this way. Okay, there's an incline here. I'm going to go down, shift down a little bit. So you, uh, you're pedaling. Yeah, you're not going over the fastest, but no, I'm, I'm not, uh, I'm not uh, any uh, difficulties in pedaling uh, over that, that incline. Let's hit the throttle. Let's get down this thing. When we get over to the next incline, we'll pedal again, see how we do. Yeah, getting better. Getting better at it. You know, when I first took the bike out, yeah, I was clunking all over the place. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know what I was supposed to be doing. The thing is, um, shifting is not that difficult um, if you come from, from a background of a of normal regular bike, right? Non-electric bike. But um, if you haven't ridden in a while, uh, getting tired, I'll take the throttle. If, you're, if you haven't ridden in a while, then yeah, it's, it's, gonna, it's gonna be kind of difficult initially. Or if you've ridden uh, an electric bike, but it was a hub, hub motor bike, it's going to take a while to get used to riding a, a mid-drive. So yeah, okay. I think we've talked enough about this whole thing. <laughs> get a, get a mid-drive bike if you want, a, if you want a, a more natural feel of like riding a regular non-electric bike. Okay, here's the stop sign. Nobody ever comes through here. Yep, gated on both sides. <laughs> Nobody ever goes through there. Okay, um, get a um, get a hub drive bike. If you got issues with uh, strength in your legs and whatever, I, I would recommend a hub drive bike. Get the um, my recommendation for the Rambler would be the middle model, the advanced model. Get the one with the uh, uh, let's let's uh, gear down, pedal this one, going up a little bit. Um, Get the, get the one with the hydraulic brakes. Yeah, it's a couple hundred dollars more, but believe me, I think that'll be well worth the, the $200 that you spend on it. Let them install it, <laughs> okay? I mean, you could always buy the, the basic model and add a hydraulic brake later, but why do you want to do all the installation? Let them do it. Yeah, just go, initially just go out and get it. Be happier with it. Now, I've seen some comments too from some of you guys mentioning you know, the big fat tires, nah, it's not so good, get a thinner tire. Okay, yeah, if you, if you ride like, like these paths or you're on the street, yeah, the thinner tires actually makes a little more sense because it's less rolling resistance and everything. So, uh, yeah, that would make more sense in that case. But um, I still like my fat tire bikes. I, I kind of prefer them only because I know that I can hop onto the, onto the grass or onto the gravel and, and not worry about it. I, I always worry a little bit when my tires are a little too thin. Now this one's not that thin. This one's two point something inches wide, but some other tires are like one point something inch, right? Those I would worry a little bit. All right. Anyways, I appreciate you guys watching today, keeping me company. Anyway, hit the like button if you like the video. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already done so. I'll talk to you guys next time.